I'm going to to talk something like complementary to what Sam just presented. So my title is, uh, of my talk is task-based fMRI in head restrained mice. So Sam already presented um, the head post and how we fix the animal inside the scanner. So Sam was using um, one second. So Sam was using the small uh, head post because he's using a cannula. I'm using a bigger head post that covers most of the skull since I'm not putting any uh, any cannulas or any implants in the brain. So um, the motion is pretty similar. We have the motion well under one voxel. Uh, you can see the rotation on top. You can see the translations at the bottom. It's it's very minimal and almost the head of the animal almost doesn't move at all. This is um, one animal, like raw data from one animal, just an average acquisition. This is not the best or the worst. This is just what we usually expect. As you can see, we can we have signal from all over the brain. Almost there is no dropout, especially in the cortex, since most of our tasks are basically done in the cortex. So uh, now I'm going to move on to the experimental setup for the tasks. So we have here our 9.40. And we have here our Raspberry Pi and our Arduino. So we try to mix everything to get the best of each part and to be able to have a very smooth acquisition and very smooth control over the electronics that we put inside the scanner. So whenever we acquire any scan, the scanner will trigger a TTL pulse. We will receive this TTL pulse using the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi would also control the MR camera that Sam talked about that we put inside the bore uh, inside of the animal to be able to see the animal motion. And then the Raspberry Pi would also control uh, the Arduino and the Arduino will control all the electronics that we put inside the scanner. So basically, the Raspberry Pi would be facing the scanner, receive the input from the scanner to know when our scanning uh, starting and ending. And in the same time, the Raspberry Pi will trigger the Arduino to start the electronics. I'm going to talk today about two simple tasks that doesn't require any training. We just in the still in the um, in the preliminary phase where we just try to validate that things actually can work inside the scanner. We can synchronize everything. So I'm just going to talk about visual stimulation and whisker stimulation. So the stimulation setup is pretty simple. I mean, I already covered this part about the coil and uh, the mouse and um, the head post. We have here our single loop coils that we use all the time and our body restraint and the animal in the middle with the head post attached to the skull and the adapter bars that Sam just mentioned. And in front of the animal, here is our MR compatible camera. And on both sides, we put two LEDs. For the moment, I'm using blue LEDs. We hope to, to use more colors and more, more like spectrums. But for this experiment, I just use blue LEDs. As you can see, they are uh, bolted to a tray because they are not uh, MR compatible and we are putting them in front of the animal. So they are a little bit above the plane of the animal. This might explain some of the findings we are going to see shortly. And here, these are two air tubes that are like positioned in front of the whiskers of the animal. And of course, the, the tube is attached to um, an air pump that's outside the, um, uh, the console, uh, outside the scanner room. So the tube has to be pretty long, but we managed actually to get, to, to validate that actually we have air like blowing from both, from both sides of the, um, of the tubes. So this is how the visual tray or the visual LEDs look like in real life. Again, we have a tray, we have two LEDs on both sides and they are fitted here and the animal would be on the far end here. So this is how it looks like with 10 Hertz stimulation. As you can see, the animals are quite still and as the light is flashing, it should be flashing on the left as well. Yeah. So as you can see here, these are two different animals and this is 10 Hertz. And again, we are controlling everything with the Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to move shortly to how we process our data. So for the pre-processing, I'm using the same acquisition protocol as Sam with 300, 300, 500 microns for the functional um, for the functional data. And again, we have 400 volumes for each scanning cell, for each scanning run. So our pre-processing pipeline is pretty standard. We have here the functional images. We have here on the other side on red the anatomical images for the functional images. 
we remove the skull, then we do the motion correction, we do some smoothing. Again, as Ravi mentioned, it's usually below uh, two voxels. Here, since we have 300 by 300, my uh, smoothing kernel is 500 microns. And then we do some intensity normalization, and finally, we do high pass filtering to remove all the uh, low drafting noise. And on the other side, the pretty standard anatomical processing, we remove the skull, we co-register our functional data to the anatomical image. And finally, we, um, we register our anatomical image to a high resolution image to be able to, to judge where is the activation. The stimulation paradigm is on and off a block design. We have 45 seconds off and 15 seconds on and so on across uh, 600 seconds. How we, we analyze, after we do the pre-processing, how do we, we, we proceed to actually check if uh, the brain has activation or not? We take our block design, we convolve it with our canonical uh, HRF, uh, double gamma function, and we will get some regressors like this. And then we will check at each time series in each voxel, we fit these regressors over the time series, and based on this, we will get a value. We say this voxel, is, the fitting is significant or not significant. Obviously, in this case, significant voxel will be deemed as active and non-significant voxels will be deemed inactive. So basically, we are going through voxels, searching for this pattern in the time series. And based on this, we decide if the region is activated or not. So this is some activation maps from both animals that I showed earlier on top and bottom. As you can see here, the activation is not exactly what we would expect. We have some activation in, in visual areas, but we also have some unspecific activation. And also we can see that the activation is not symmetric as we were hoping to. And in the bottom, you can see even that we don't have this much activation. We can see this like small cluster might be a little bit shifted because of registration. We can say that it might be in the visual area, but we cannot say for sure. So the take from here is this is just a single run, just a preliminary result. So we usually, uh, we acquire multiple runs from multiple animals, then we will average them. And based on this, we will, we will see that if the activation is actually specific or due to other factors like motion or any other things that might be happening during the acquisition. If you remember from uh, the videos I showed earlier, the animal is just constantly moving and some of this motion is actually correlated with the activation will be more obvious once I move to the whisker stimulation. So this is the whisker stimulation setup. The animal is here in the middle and we have the two tubes passing underneath the MR camera and blowing air on the face of the animal. Stimulation paradigm is the same, 45 seconds off, 15 seconds on. So as you can see here, the air blowing in the animal's face and basically the animal is, is moving its face, its nose because it's annoying to them at least at the beginning. I noticed that as we move further in the scanning, the animals start to be like more calm and they just actually don't move at all with the air blowing in their faces. So I guess they get adapted with time. Also the air is like not very strong because we don't want to hurt the animal or cause them any physical pain. So this is just like a bees, very, very, very small amount of, of air. And again, to move uh, to our activation map, we can see a lot of activation actually in the, in, the, in the somatosensory cortex in both animals, but still, again, we need more validation that this is actually a specific activation to this, to this task and not to, to other reasons. But again, I'm showing only a single run from both animals, just as a preliminary result to show you a flavor of what, of what we are doing. And trying to boot both stimulation at the same time, the visual, uh, the flickering light and the whisker stimulation at the same time, you can see activation all over the brain. And uh, this is again, single runs. So we wouldn't be able to judge more or, or like move further until we get validations that this is actually uh, activation due to, due to the task in hand. Finally, I would like to thank all the lab, especially Sam, Kyle, Peter, Miranda, and Alex all helped in this work, especially Sam, we developed all of this work together. So I would like to say thank you to everybody and thank you for listening.